Hello and welcome to Beginning Synthesis on Free Software. This is episode zero, why and how. So, another series on synthesis. Why exactly am I doing this? Well, you may remember that I had a series on synthesis where I used hardware synthesizers, and I used a whole variety of them in an attempt to demonstrate that the skills you learn on one synthesizer can be readily transferred to another. But, you may be under the impression that in order to learn synthesis, you need a piece of hardware. Most commonly, the recommended piece of hardware for learning subtractive synthesis is what would be called a knob per function synthesizer. So I'd like to explain why that is commonly recommended, and I would like to explain why I think a piece of software can be just as useful. Firstly, what does knob per function mean? Well, a synthesizer is a machine that generates sound, and the sound that it generates is influenced by a set of parameters um, that you can adjust. So when we say knob per function, we mean there is a dedicated control on the panel of the synthesizer for each of those parameters. So in other words, every parameter involved in the synthesis of sound is presented simultaneously to you and you can simply look at the panel to understand the state. In contrast, in software, typically, because the interface can be flexible, it's common to have a modal interface. That means that the software synthesizer will have different views to show you depending on the task you are doing. So it will have a set of tailored interfaces for different purposes. This gives you a more specific interface for various tasks, but it means that everything is not simultaneously visible and everything is not simultaneously accessible. So before talking about the advantages and disadvantages, I'd like to step back and talk about my approach to synthesis. My approach to synthesis is embodied by a relatively simple phrase that I like to think about. When I'm designing sounds, before everything, I have to imagine. I have to imagine the sound that I'm trying to achieve. Once I've imagined the sound that I'm trying to achieve, now I'm in a sound design process. And what does that look like? First, I listen to the sound that the synthesizer is making in its current state. Second, I think about, from the perspective of how the synthesizer functions, how I can adjust the sound that I'm hearing to get closer to the sound in my imagination. I then make a change while listening to get closer to that sound that I'm trying to achieve, and then I repeat that process. So what am I doing? I'm listening, I'm thinking, and then I'm changing. So, why do I think a software synthesizer or a hardware synthesizer would help in this regard? One of the things that a knob per function hardware synthesizer gives you is the opportunity to very quickly change any parameter you want. And what this can do is encourage, especially in the early days, an approach of listen, change, repeat. I listen, I make a change, I see what happens. I listen, I make a change, I see what happens. I try and develop an intuition for how the synthesizer functions. Note that the think step was absent from that process. I believe that for subtractive synthesis, it is possible to learn to be an effective sound designer by this random approach, but I definitely don't think it's the most effective approach. I also think that if you move to thinking about more complicated forms of synthesis, such as FM synthesis, if you take this random approach, you will never become an effective sound designer. So why software? Well, one of the reasons is because you have to adjust parameters using a mouse and using a keyboard, and it's relatively slow and inefficient, unlike a piece of hardware, it forces you to try and make higher value adjustments every time you make an adjustment. That's to say, I can't randomly adjust every single parameter because it's just too slow. So it forces a more measured approach. And this measured approach helps build the think step in my sound design process. So what I'm going to do today is introduce the software that we'll be using. 
introduce the general principles of the interface to the DAW we use and the synthesizer that we use. And from there, I think I'll call it an end to this episode and we'll come back and really dive into sound synthesis. So let's have a look at the software first. If you have seen me before, you will probably know that I use Linux, which is a free operating system. The first free piece of software here. But note that the DAW and the plugin that we're using are available for Windows and for Mac. So effectively, whatever platform you're on, this is going to be available to you and it's going to be available to you free of charge. The DAW that I'm using here is Ardor, unlike my normal DAW, Bitwig. Why am I using Ardor? Because Ardor is free and Bitwig is not. I like Bitwig very much, but I promised free software, so I'm going to show you free software. Let's have a quick look at the interface just to get an understanding. But note, this is not an Ardor tutorial. I'm not even very good at using Ardor nor is this a tutorial for the software synthesizer that we will be using. This is a tutorial on synthesis and how to learn synthesis. So let's have a look at the interface. First, we have a big arranger window where we put pieces of um, clip and data. We have a contextual panel on the left, which is a sort of mixer panel for the track that's selected. We have some transport, we have some times, various things, nothing particularly unusual, and any DAW would have these same type of things. Now I'm going to add a track, which is going to contain the synthesizer that we'll be working with. So here is the track, and what I will do then is, I mentioned that I'm going to use free software, and what I didn't really state is, I'm going to try and only use the computer. And by that I mean, I'm not going to use an external controller to enter notes. I'm going to do it entirely with the mouse. So to get us started, I'm going to paint in an extraordinarily dull um, little line here. So this is just ascending and descending the C minor pentatonic scale. So I could make polyphonic, in other words, I could make chords here, I could adjust the length of these notes, I could adjust the velocity. So there is nothing stopping me from making a more complicated piece of music in this way. Personally, I'm a keyboard player, I rather play things in, but again, you do not need a piece of hardware here. This is accessible to you without. So now let me bring up the interface for the software itself. The DAW, uh, <laughs> the plugin that we're using is called Odin 2. I chose it because I think it has a relatively intuitive interface and is relatively simple. And I think simple is good because we want to learn principles, but I would like you to remember that this is not an Odin tutorial. This is not a tutorial that you need this software for. This is intended to teach you about synthesis, so please consider in the abstract what I'm talking about. So let's have a quick look at the interface. First, how does the signal flow? When I talk about synthesis, there will be a flow of audio through the system. Well, it starts from these three upper panels, which we call oscillators, those are sound sources. These transmit into these left and right panels. And from these left and right panels, they go into the center panel, depending whether this button is illuminated or not. So in this case, we can see that this unit, which is called low pass 24, is receiving input from the upper three panels. Two of them are empty, so it's only receiving something logically from this oscillator. Then, it is not going into the amplifier directly, but rather it is going into the second filter via this filter one switch here. So we could actually send it directly over there if we wanted. Because there's no unit, the data will just bypass and go straight into the amplifier. The amplifier does indeed amplify, but it can also attenuate. That may not sound hugely useful, but there is another aspect to this, which is in synthesis, we have devices to control other parameters. 
particularly we have these things called envelopes which have some function they turn some knob in response to key presses so this is going to be important and i'll explain that in more detail then from the amplifier the signal flows down into this third filter so we actually have three filters available to us here and then it flows into the effects unit and then it flows out into your software through the sound card so let's have a look at the signal flow here quickly we have one oscillator called an analog oscillator this is a similar in function to what you would see in many simple hardware synthesizers that do subtractive synthesis. That flows into a low pass filter. I haven't told you what a filter is. A filter is a device that will remove some harmonic content or emphasize some harmonic content in a sound. So that means, for example, if the oscillator is buzzy, we can take off some of the buzz. It flows into this second filter, which is bypass, and into the amplifier. The amplifier will then shape the sound. So in other words, it'll be the difference between that slow swelling violin and that sudden plucking and decaying guitar and that classic lead synthesizer, which stays loud the whole time, possibly shaped by another filter, and then finally into some effects. I'm going to explain all of these sections as we go, but for now, I just want you to understand the interface. Let's listen. An extraordinarily boring pattern. But hopefully you can hear that the synthesizer is playing the notes that I painted in. So in the next episode, I'll have painted in probably some slightly more complicated notes or melodies, just so we have something more interesting to listen to. And I will begin at the beginning of the signal flow, the oscillator section, to describe how we go about designing sounds. So I hope this all sounds interesting to you. I hope that you will join me for the rest of this series, which is hopefully going to be relatively short. But in any case, I'd like to say thank you very much for joining me today and goodbye.